Hi everyone. If you ever wondered how you can create an NSX management cluster, a three node cluster, without the use of a vSphere server as a compute manager, that's what I'm going to cover. So stick around, we'll see you in a bit. Hi right, everyone, thanks for sticking around. So uh, why don't we jump right into this. Let's create a three node NSX management cluster without the use of a compute manager. Now, I guess some of you might be asking, well, why would I want to do that? Well, prior to version four, uh, you were able to run the NSX manager on a KVM host, right? So if you didn't even have a vSphere environment, you could have done, had a KVM environment. And at that point, you'd have to do what I've, I'm actually doing, right? But perhaps maybe like in my lab environment, I actually, you know, spin things up, tear things down, spin things up. Depending on what classes I'm teaching, I have to be very flexible in my environment. So I actually use VMware Workstation quite a bit, and I had got a whole bunch of VMs for different environments. So sometimes I would like to have a three node cluster, sometimes I don't care. Just a single node cluster is fine for me, right? So, so that's kind of one possible reason, and that's why I'm kind of showing this. Another reason, maybe you're going to uh, maybe you're going to go onto a customer's location and you're going to set this environment up for them, but you want to try and do as much um, work prior to going there. Maybe you're on a plane or something like that. You could actually start maybe spinning up, you know, the, the NSX managers prior to going to the customer's site and you just copy the stuff across. And I actually use a lot of that. I actually uh, don't have it here, but I actually have USB drives, all that, and I, I transfer things around quite a bit. So, um, so that's one possible reason. Now, uh, let me kind of show you my environment. And let me just get this one out of the way. There we go. Oop. So this is actually a, a workstation I have here. And you actually see I got VMware workstation I'm actually using. And I got three managers deployed here. Managers uh, uh, one, two, and three. And they're running under VMware workstation. Um, you may be wondering, how do I do that? It's pretty straightforward. Just get the appliance, the uh, NSX manager appliance. Let me show you where mine is. So I'm, I'm demoing in 4.10. And you get the appliance, so the unified appliance. So there's the OVF file. I just double click on it and it defaults to, to uh, uh, running VMware Workstation. At that point, just give it a name. Maybe I'll call it, you know, NSX-04, right? Uh, I'll go next. Uh, you pick the size that you want. Again, it talks about the, it gives you the information down here below and I've talked about it before. So I'm just gonna say small, right? Uh, then you go through and you configure all these parameters, right? You can specify the grub password. You can leave that blank, that's okay. The grub user password, again, you can leave all this grub stuff blank if you want to. Then you have to specify the root user password, the system root user password, confirm it, sorry. So you need to set those. The admin user password, and again, confirm that password, again, you need to set those. Uh, the audit user password, again, you don't have to set those, you can just ignore those ones. The min username and audit username, you can, the defaults there, you can leave those alone. And optional parameters and confirm. Again, you don't need to set any of these. If you're not sure, you can click on these little information boxes, it gives you a little bit of information. Um, then you click over here, don't, one mistake you might do is say import. You gotta go to network properties, specify the host name, the fully qualified domain name of the host. The role, is it an SX manager? Or uh, again, is it a master role for a federation, like a global manager? Um, is it a, uh, then you specify your IP information, the IP address, the subnet mask, the IP4 gateway, and then IP6 stuff if you want to. I just use IP4 generally in my lab environment. Then you specify the DNS servers or server and the domain search name, right? So whatever, abc.com, whatever your domain is. Then services configuration, you specify your NTP server IP address. Do you want to enable SSH? Do you want to allow root access to SSH? By default, it says no, you can allow that. Uh, software integrity checker, again, if you want to have that enabled or disabled, you don't have to. Uh, and then internal properties, just leave it alone. It's internal property says don't fill it out. Just fill out those things, hit import, and that's it. Just go have a coffee, come back, and it just imported it, and you just now have a manager running on VMware Workstation. By the way, don't do this in production. <laughs> this is not supported in production. This is for me like a lab environment or whatever, right? I'm not gonna go through that. I've already got my three deployed here. The other recommendation I also give you folks, uh, and I've learned this lesson, don't get, if you've got a, a desktop that doesn't really have a lot of resources, the NSX manager is not gonna like it. Um, if I actually go into my settings here, um, don't get stingy with it, especially on memory. I noticed I got about 24 gigs of memory here. I got eight processors. I'm a little overkill on the processors. I, I could have gotten away with four. 
uh, 24 gigs of memory. Again, I could have brought it down to like 16. Um, don't get stingy. If you get stingy, especially with memory, you're going to have nothing but problems with it, okay? Um, this machine, you might be wondering, since I got these three managers, how much resources this machine has. If I actually go to my, this is actually just one of my desktop machines. Uh, I, I've got basically um, 10 cores, 20 threads. You can see that over here. So you see 20 threads here. Uh, and then memory, I've got 128 gigs of memory. So that allows me fairly enough to, to do this comfortably, right? Anything less, um, it's going to struggle, believe me. All right. Uh, so that's how I've got mine set up. So there's my three managers. Let me get out of there. Let me go back to my desktop now because that's kind of under the covers. You, you know, uh, you wouldn't have known that if I, if, I, if I just went right over here. So I'm on a desktop machine right here. I'm going to fire up a browser. These three managers, managers, site A managers, one, two, and three are deployed individually. They are just plain Jane deployments, just like I kind of demoed there, and that's it. Um, I can log into each of them. So I just logged into my first one, NSX Manager 01. I'm going to click on that. Let me open a tab and log into the second one, HTTPS site a dash nsx mgr dash o2 dot vclass dot local and again I'll same user id and password i'm going to log in to the third one https slash slash site a dash nsx mgr dash o3 dot vclass dot local and i'll log in with that and just to show you that they're all individual and i'll show you another way of proving that uh let me go back to my first one the first one's you know, I just logged into it. I'll click on system. I'll click on appliances and you'll see, come on. Da -da -da -da. This is just basically a plain Jane install of this thing. Here we go. Notice it says a compute manager is required to deploy any appliances below. Technically, that's not true, right? If you want the N6, if you want vCenter server to do the deployment for you, great. Yeah, you do need it, right? And I've actually demoed that in one of my videos. I'll put a link to that on how to deploy or set up your cluster using vSphere, right? Uh, but we're not doing that in this video. So you notice this is my first manager. It's 172.20.10.41. That's uh, manager 01. If I go to manager 02, let me skip this wizard. Let's go to system. Let's go to system. Let's go to appliances. And again, it's not registered with the vCenter server. You'll see over here, you can see it loading. But in the background, you can see 172.20.10.42. That's manager 02. Last but not least, let me skip this. Let's look at manager 03. They're essentially, they're, they're three separate clusters. Three, they are three single node clusters and they haven't been registered with any vCenter servers. If I go back to system appliance, notice it's 172.20.10.43 for manager three. So these are three individual NSX managers running. I wanna join them together because I didn't use vSphere, I didn't use vCenter server as a compute manager it would do all that stuff for me. I now need to mainly go in and do that. And how can I do it? I'm going to basically, actually I'll kill this. Okay, so I'm going to putty into it to make it a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to go to my first manager here. I'm using MT putty and I'm going to open up a putty session to all three managers, right? Uh, I'll go to the first one. It's automatically set to login as a, uh, admin. If I just type in get cluster status, again, you'll see uh, it's basically showing me this is stable. Uh, these are all the different um, services that are running. And you'll notice, okay, this is all running on manager one. I could do the same thing for get cluster status for node two and three. It would report back the same thing. So they're all, they are basically three individual single node clusters. Now, I don't want that. I want to join manager two to manager one, okay? You can pick whichever one you want. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to say my first node is my first one. So I'm going to go to, uh, so first thing I need to know is I'm going to go to my first node here. So I'm going to manager one. I need to get the cluster ID. So I'm going to type in get, well, cluster config or status would actually give that to me as well. And there is the cluster ID right there. So I'm going to copy that. So I just copied that. All right. Actually, I'm going to close this down so the screen's a bit bigger. There we go. Now I'm going to go to manager 02. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in join and oh, I forget the command. I'm going to hit enter and it comes by it back and it shows me everything here. OK, so I'm going to type it says join IP, then port. If you're using a different port, I'm just going to say join my manager. One IP is 172.20.10.41. They typed that in 10.41. 
I'll leave the D I'll leave the port alone because it's using a the default. Uh, then I gotta specify cluster ID, cluster dash ID, and then I put in the cluster ID which I just pasted, so or copied. So there we go. The next thing is thumbprint. So I'll type in thumbprint. Oops, can't type. Thumbprint. Hopefully I got that. Now I need the the uh, API thumbprint. Let me go back to manager one. I'm gonna type in get certificate. I could hit tab API thumbprint. I'm hitting tab and it auto completes. If you don't know, just type in the command and then hit tab and, or hit enter. I'll come back and show you a list of possible commands. There is the thumbprint. I'm gonna double click on that. I've just copied that thumbprint. I'm gonna go back to manager two. I'm gonna paste that thumbprint. And then the next thing it says token. I don't really need that API token. Username and password is what I need. So I'll say username. Username is admin. Password. My password is VMware. One bang. VMware. One bang. Did I type that in right? VMware. One bang. I hit enter. Command not found. It. I made a mistake somewhere along here. Join. Okay, there we go. Very easy to make little typos. So I got join G, oh, whatever. Got a G there. Let's get rid of that. Let's hit enter. It says, are you, it says um, data on this node will be lost. Are you sure? So this is node two. So if it if it had an environment there, goodbye, right? So, but I'm just assuming you're doing fresh, fresh installs, like I said. So I'm just gonna say yes. Now this will take a few minutes to deploy or this will take a few minutes to, to join. Um, and what it's gonna happen is uh, once it's joined, uh, it's gonna restart the services on node one. So yeah, this is gonna bring um, the management control plane down because it's, it's gonna restart those services. So this could take about five, seven, eight minutes, 10, depending on your environment, right? I run a VMware workstation. It's pretty quick right now. Um, I got a lot of resources, so here we go. So it says operation successful. Services are being restarted. Cluster may take some time to stabilize. That means all the services are up and running. Let's go to node one. Let's type in get cluster status. I hit enter. Notice now there's two nodes in my cluster. There's node one that's always been there. Now there's node two. So it's showing you all the different kind of services here. So first of all, we see uh, we see again the cluster ID. That's that first one. Uh, overall status is degraded. Everything's restarting, so you've got to be patient. Uh, you'll see the data store right now. It says it's stable. It's up on both nodes. This is kind of bonus troubleshooting as well. You get the cluster boot manager. It's degraded. Looks like it's up on the first node, down on the second. Again, these services are starting. So then uh, the manager service is degraded, up on the first, down on the second. Uh, again, the HTTPS service up on the first, down on the second, so on and so forth. And you'll notice again the uh, the core few non-config is stable. It's up on both. And I've got, again, if I hit the up arrow, uh, I, again it's showing me. So this is going to take probably about um, five, seven, eight minutes for everything to stabilize. So at this point, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to go grab a coffee. Right? That's what I would suggest that you do. Just take a break and then uh, come back and check it. So um, I'm just gonna let this thing go and I'll probably um, speed it up afterwards, right? Actually, let's look at cluster, let's look at node two while we're sitting here. Get cluster status. Boom, you see, right? So it's showing me, you know, it's part of the, of the it's part of the collective, right? Um, so here we go, There's and we see some services are up, some are down still, so we wait. Uh, I wanna join the third one, but I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm gonna wait till everything stabilizes. I've kind of rolled the dice in the past, just like, ah, I'm just gonna blast them both in, and probably not the greatest thing to do. I know I used to do that with NSX or vSphere, but, and, and I never really had any issues. Uh, I'm just gonna let this go through, get stable, and then we'll come back and then we'll add, we'll check things out, we'll add the third node in, okay? So I'm just gonna basically pause my recording till this is finished. Okay, everybody, um, I'm back. It only took about five minutes. Um, so I'm actually on manager one here. If I do get cluster status, you see all the services are up. Let me just scroll up, 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 up. We see everything. And this is actually, um, yeah, here we go. So get cluster status. We see the overall status is stable. Rock and roll, everything is looking good, right? Uh, let me do something. Let me go into the browser now. 
and let me go to manager one. I could have gone to manager two, doesn't matter. It's my other computer beeping in the background. It's being rude. All right, so I'm on manager one. If I go to systems now, I go to appliances. Again, you see a compute manager is required. I don't have a compute manager. And that's, hey, that's what I want. I, for my lab environment, I, I'm just, and notice now here, I got manager one, that's dot 41, manager two, dot 42, both of them looking good. Everything is fine. There's no backup. Who cares? That's something totally different, right? Uh, I now need to repeat the process on manager three. So let's go back to MP Putty. Uh, I'm going to go to manager three. I'm going to type in that join. Oh, I always forget. I just type in join, hit enter, comes up and tells me to stop. So join, type in the IP address. So I'm going to put in IP address of that first node, 172.20.10.41. 10, 10 uh, I got the default port. I'm going to leave it alone. The cluster ID. Okay, uh, I'll type in cluster dash ID. And then I got to go and get the cluster ID. Let me go back to node one. And the cluster ID, you can also get with the get cluster status command there's the cluster ID right there actually let me just get it without so copy and, and paste that's why I like using MT putty M yeah MT putty or putty in general because I can copy all those things just by highlighting it let me go back to number three and I'm just gonna right click and it pastes it I'm gonna hit space then the thumbprint thumbprint I hit tab I'm gonna go back to node one uh, let's go type in again what's it get certificate API, thumb, and I just hit tab, print, and then boom, I hit enter. There's my thumbprint. I'm going to double click on it. It's now copied. I'll go back to manager three. I'll right click. It's paste. Then the next thing, there's the thumbprint. Uh, I don't need to worry about token API token stuff. I'm not an API guy. Username, username is admin, password is VMware, one bang, VMware. One bang. I hit enter. Are you sure you want to do this? I go yes. All data on node three will be lost. I don't care. That's fine. It's a fresh install. I wait for a few minutes. Okay. So same kind of thing. Um, I'll probably speed up this process right now, uh, just so or or pause it or whatever. Uh, pause the recording and then we'll come back and we'll see that the third node should be up and running. Okay. So actually. Actually, you know what, before I do that, let's just let this part go. Just bear with me for a few seconds here. Um, I may crank it up a little bit. We'll see how fast it does this. And let's go into, let's go into manager one while it's doing that. Let's type in get cluster status. No, oh, okay, this still does. Oh, well, look at that down at the bottom there. There's 43. Let's try it again. There we go. So we see the three nodes. We see these services are up on nodes one and one and two, but down on node three, down on node three. So we're, and then some of the services down here, like the Corfu uh, non-config, uh, basically, again, the status is up. So same thing as before, we have to wait because it's now a three node cluster. We've got to wait uh, for uh, all these services to start up, right? So um, like I said, at this point, I'll probably just um, I'll pause the recording, come back and show it to you. Oh, I just disconnected from that guy. So let's go get, let's try it from node three, get cluster status. So there's, again, that's on node three. Again, we're, we have to wait. So uh, I'll pause it, I'll come back when it's done and then we'll show you. All right, everybody, we are back and it's finished. So I type in get cluster status. I see the various services are all up and running. If I scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Uh, where is it, right there. So uh, get cluster status. We see it, the cluster is stable. And then here's all the different services. Each of them will all be stable. Again, this is one way of doing troubleshooting. If you're, maybe your, your uh, control plane is down, you can go into your, one of the managers, run this command. And you can see, oh, is the, you know, the controller status. Right now this is stable, but which one is down? Uh, so anyways, uh, so that's that. Let's go into our manager. Okay, notice I actually, this is the uh, the browser that we logged in before. It refreshed. Notice we got three managers here. So, uh, managers one, two, and three. Okay, uh, and that's pretty much it. I now have a three-node uh, three node NSX management cluster, and I did not use uh, vCenter as a compute manager. So again, why did I do this, folks? By the way, if you stuck around this long, I really appreciate it, right? Uh, maybe hit that subscribe button. Um, but... Why did I do this? I personally now, and I'll have these three nodes as a, uh, three VMs as a separate, as a uh, isolated 
NSX management cluster. I could copy these three VMs and I could put it away somewhere on a drive somewhere. And then as I'm spinning up labs, tearing down labs, I can actually utilize this. I will be utilizing this in an upcoming troubleshooting video where I need three managers to show you some stuff in troubleshooting, right? But for the most part, most of the stuff I demo, one manager is just fine. So this is a way for me to kind of just spin things up, tear them down really, really fast and not do it. So I'll have these set aside. Uh, so later on, again, I could add a vSphere compute manager to this. I could do all kinds of stuff, right? So kind of a neat way, or maybe you just wanted to spin up these three and play around and check things out and try and break something and do something, whatever. You know, again, there's all kinds of stuff here, right? Uh, but that's it. Thanks for sticking around. If you found this entertaining at all, hit that likes button. Uh, also, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. I got a lot of views. Doesn't seem like I got a lot of subscribers. Those ones I have, I do appreciate it. Uh, without subscribers, there's no content, <laughs> right? There'll be no channels. So hit that subscribe button. I've got some other stuff coming up. I've had some requests. I want to do some. Uh, yep. Yeah. Anyways, stay tuned. Thank you very much. Have a great day.